Last month I visited a body farm in Texas. So these are places where researchers take recently deceased human bodies and they essentially just leave them out to decompose. So this research, mainly it's helpful when law enforcement come across a body under mysterious circumstances, maybe a murder, and they want to know how long has it been out here. The bodies are scattered all over the field. They have about 50 out and most of them are under these metal cages that prevent the vultures from getting in. I kept asking him to lift up the cages for me to get better photos. So what happens right after you die is all the fluids that are inside your cells when you're alive leak out and bacteria start feeding immediately. And they're converting the liquids and solids inside you into gases that they emit. And this causes the second stage, which is bloat. You also have something called marbling during the stage because one of the gases, sulfur, uh, it binds to the hemoglobin molecules in your blood and changes the color of them to an orange or yellow. And at the same time, flies come. They come almost immediately when the body's placed and they lay eggs. And they especially lay them in any orifices, so your head will get a lot of maggots on it, the eye sockets and mouth and nose, and they'll eat away at that first. They're absolutely just crawling over the body, like getting up really close to it and taking photos was the most intense thing I did there. Then after a few days of that, the body moves to the third stage, which is called purge, and that's ultimately the bloating is relieved as a lot of the gas and fluids leak out. You see this dark fluid pooling around the body. And the interesting thing is that fluid, it's really nutrient rich, but it's so rich in nitrogen that it kills off the plants initially. But a year later, it'll become especially fertile. So here, this is the next stage. A lot of the changes happen really rapidly at first, and then it slows down a lot. There's certainly still bacteria here, but if you were to graph all the nutrients, it's a sh very sharp decline. If the body's in the sun, especially in Texas, the heat is so strong that a lot of bacteria and insects can't actually survive. And so instead of continuing to decompose the body, it'll really gradually mummify. It'll just dry up. But if the body's in the shade, then the bacteria and insects can continue to feed on it and they'll essentially eat it down to a skeleton. With the vultures, the process is completely different because a flock of them will just swarm a body immediately if it's left uncaged and they can eat pretty much all the flesh off within a few hours. One thing that really fascinated me is the way the bones are frayed, and that's from their beaks ripping at it voraciously. And that looks like leather or clothing, but it's skin. Typically, they're left out to decompose for six to 12 months. So when the bodies come in, they'll boil them, and they put detergent on them, and that strips away most of the remaining flesh. And then volunteer undergraduate interns will clean every single bone with a toothbrush. The smell was actually the strongest inside that lab. It smells like rotting meat, uh, which is essentially what it is. You know, just organic substances that have gone bad. And then after they get clean, they get laid back out, they get labeled, and then they get sent to the, the lab closer into town where they get boxed up. And so this basically serves as a contemporary skeleton collection. Um, which there aren't that many of, as it turns out. We really seldom see bodies anymore in our modern culture. Most people die in a hospital. They get directly sent to a funeral home. That funeral home injects them with formaldehyde and puts makeup all over them so they don't look like a dead body. But the truth is that ultimately, whether we see it or not, this happens. Unless you get cremated, it's going to happen to you. I mean, that's what ecosystems evolved to do, is harvest nutrients to create new life.